Brilliant, Arnold. Nice outfit. Are you ready to party? Out of sheer envy, Clint Eastwood himself would burst into tears like a little girl if he saw you. This'll be a super experience, I promise you. Dang, everyone's in cowboy suits here. Well, you're not the first person to copy this image. The American cowboys styled themselves after Spanish cowboys called vaqueros, and they appeared long before the American ones, when the Spaniards began to colonize south of the border. And did you know one in three cowboys was black, and one in four was Indian? And the language they most often spoke was Spanish, not English. Quite the introduction, Arnold. You really now are in the actual Wild West. And they call it wild for a reason, buddy. And nowhere is this moniker embodied more than in Fort Griffin, Texas. The fort was originally designed to protect ranchers and farmers who live nearby. The city quickly became a popular stopover for cowboys and criminals, and law enforcement was virtually nil. As a result, the city became even more dangerous, and it looks like you're now the sheriff of this city. Sorry, is it just me or are sheriffs not very popular in this little old town? Arnold. Really? The first thing you decided to do as head honcho around here was update your wardrobe? Why so surprised? The average life expectancy in the Wild West was about 35 years. And for sheriffs, it was decreasing exponentially. Here comes your first good deed, Sheriff. What? You thought only cowboys carried guns. In reality, most cowboys were like shepherds driving cattle. They were pretty much harmless folk. But people with weapons were called gunfighters, and they earned their living with guns. The most legendary shooter in the whole Wild West was Frenzy Bill Longley. According to various sources, he killed up to 85 people and had a $1,000 bounty on his head. Luckily, people didn't have such good aim back then. By the way, it was the era of the Wild West that gave birth to the culture of owning guns in America. Arnold, listen. Hearing that kind of music is definitely not good. In westerns, it usually means that bandits have entered town and are probably going to do something bad like rob a bank. It's Dirty Harry, One-Eared Tom, and Handsome Bill. Hmm, why were they given such obvious nicknames back then? Interesting solution, Arnold. You blew up the bank so the bandits can't rob it. You're a natural-born strategic genius. No, Arnold, you forgot about the train carrying the gold. According to statistics, there were 241 train robberies during the time of the crazy Wild West. Quite good statistics. You forgot one of the sheriff's main rules. Your revolver must always be in perfect working order. Whoops, we have a small problem. Arnold, don't be scared, but you are buried alive. Just like Rodrigo Cortez. <laughs> uh, stop yelling already. Screaming increases panic, heart, and accordingly the amount of air you use. And you have a maximum of two hours of breathing in your coffin until you run out of oxygen. Arnold, your phone! You're only two meters deep. Hooray! There's one line of connection. Call your loved ones. They'll save you. But this isn't certain because for them, you're dead. They'll probably think your call is someone's stupid hmm. prank. Try to connect to the internet. Your post will be seen for sure, but only after they like a cat in a funny suit, a new post by Ariana Grande, and a funny-shaped potato. I have it. Geotag post gets 79% more engagement, and a post that says oil was found will 100% attract the attention of Donald Trump. In critical situations, a person's animal instincts wake up. Well, I expected that it would wake up in you. Arnold, when lacking oxygen, people often see hallucinations. Maybe we can Google what to do. Don't hammer a nail in your life like it's a coffin lid. Get out of your comfort zone. There's no way. Oh, kill Bill too. Do it like Uma Thurman. You need to punch a hole in the lid. Be strong in spirit. Collect all your anger like Naruto. Ooh, did it hurt? You need to somehow break the lid. Look if you have anything in your pockets. Ew, Arnold, what is that? Oh, give me a break. You won't even need them outside the coffin. Ooh, this will do. Breakthrough. Hit. 
It's like you're trying to escape from fascists or from the whining songs of Billie Eilish. You did it! Now you have to tamp all the dirt into the coffin to clear your way out. You have to lift your shirt so that it can be tied over your head. This is so that you don't suffocate from dirt falling on your head. Arnold! 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 Wake up! Hallucinations again. It's way easier for a person to get from out of a dap if it's equal or less than their height. My friends don't act like that. Arnold, what have you done this time? Oh, not you, but rather your dangerous aunt. After she walked free last time, she got up to her old nefarious yeah. habits again. And now the FBI are taking you for 24 hours what? because, well, you know her best. There are about 15,000 agents working for the FBI with 56 regional offices. Their main training facility is located in Quantico, Virginia. Virginia. More than a hundred special agents are at the facility at any given time, ready to train new agents. They'll also teach our Arnold. An FBI agent has to be prepared for anything, but not for this. How can that even possibly come in handy, Arnold? FBI agents received the right to carry weapons in 1934, a whole 26 years after their founding. Nowadays, marksmanship training is absolutely necessary. And one of the most important courses. And Arnold seems to be doing just fine. Having proved his abilities at all stages of training, our Arnold will become an FBI agent for 24 hours. Not bad company, Arnie. Perhaps our Arnold will try his hand at the cyber department created in 2002. That's where they have the kind of cutting-edge technology that will help Arnold in his search. Have you actually found what you're looking for already, Arnold? Come on, buck up, Arnold. I knew I shouldn't have expected much. After all, your belly always comes first. Thanks to a tip-off that was received by, of course, not Arnold, the FBI managed to find out where his aunt's accomplice lives, the infamous biker known as Buffalo Joe. And now a special operation is being carried out. Here's our suspect. Everybody get ready. Oh, Come on, Arnold. It's always something with you. Arnold, come on. Your colleagues need help. How are you going to stop him like that? What? It can't be. Ooh. Somehow, your idiocy serves you well. Here's your chance to interrogate a prisoner. Well, Arnold, to get answers, hey. you have to ask questions. And they say silence is golden. Oh, you have an idea, do you? You're going to give him a lesson on good behavior. Oh, God, what a treacherous move. Arnold, I don't recognize you. I didn't expect you to be able to break Ugh. this mountain of muscles like he was a little baby boy. Well, Arnold, you're darn close to capturing your aunt. Today, he's working as a delivery man. Come on faster, Arnold, before the kebab gets cold. Just remember to always smile and you might get tipped. What interesting people live here. I'm guessing they are watchmakers. Oh. It looks like you're going to get a big tip. Wait, what's that? Arnold, something tells me you're in some seriously deep doo-doo. I was right, Arnold. This is bad. Those guys aren't watchmakers. They're terrorists. And since you gave food to the terrorists, mm. now you're one of them. And you've been sent to a place from which nobody has ever what? escaped. Guantanamo Bay Prison. Arnold, didn't you hear me? Nobody has ever managed to escape from here. They don't even try because it's impossible. And if anyone even dares to try to escape, He'll have to find a way to get through 20 centimeter thick metal doors down an endless maze of corridors with surveillance cameras, fight off vicious guard dogs, get over super high voltage, five meter tall electric fences through razor sharp concertina wire and past dozens of guards in every sector. At the moment, 40 of the most dangerous criminals in the world are held at this prison. And you, my friend Arnold, are on the list. Congratulations! Nevertheless, you're not allowed to talk to any of them. After all, every prisoner is in strict solitary confinement 24 hours a day. Speaking of time, it's time to have lunch! 
Let's see what's on the menu for today. All right, what do we have here? They only have one special prison dish, something called Nutriloaf. Nutriloaf is a prison punishment food made from leftovers without the slightest hint of salt or spices. <laughs> Good Lord, that makes me want to barf. I have no idea how you're going to eat it, Arnold. So you're not going to eat it. You decided to go on a hunger strike as a sign of protest. Oh, and look how cute. You made a little dolly friend out of bread to keep you company. Well done, Arnold. But I think you overreacted about the food. I completely forgot to tell you, but Guantanamo Bay is not a place where human rights are given a whole lot of thought. So, if someone goes on a hunger strike, for example, he's force-fed with a tube that's pushed up one of his nostrils. Okay, so this plan doesn't always work. But don't think for a minute that this is over. A whole smorgasbord of tortures are waiting for you. Water, cold, music, and electric torture are all being practiced in Guantanamo. And the cherry on top is sleep deprivation. After just a few days of such torture, your brain and muscle functions weaken, your thinking processes spin, and your will can now easily be broken. I see you think you're already a real FBI agent, Arnold, but you're still acting like a typical cop. Hey, how's about we continue with the search for your auntie? Let's go take a peek into the FBI archives. Over 5,000 individual strands of hair are stored here as evidence. There are even case files for Charlie Chaplin and John Lennon. We need to find your aunt's case so we can get a warrant to wiretap her butt. Now we can listen in on your aunt, just like with Pablo Escobar. And according to the latest information, she's just ordered herself a pizza. Arnold, this is your chance. You can go undercover. For your safety, you'll have a hidden microphone on you. And your task is to surreptitiously hide a bug in her office. The time is now. Hop to it, Arnold. Now, everything depends on you. It's really important that you try to act as naturally as possible. Ay, yay, yay! What a doorbell! Arnie, go into her house already. This is your chance. Go, go. Come on, Arnold. This is your mission. Go and put the bug in her office. Great. Now slowly and carefully sneak closer. Yikes! We seem to have a bit of a problem, Arnold. Uh, quick, come up with something. Oh, no. Arnold, get out! Run! Before it's too late! Yee! She's a little more dangerous than I thought. Arnie, hold on. Somebody's gonna rescue you for sure. Uh-oh. The jig is up, buddy. Now she's gonna myrtleize you without batting an eyelash. Did you come to apologize, Arnold? That's so sweet of you. Mr. Nice Guy. But your auntie's got other ideas. I built a machine that makes things invisible for 24 hours. There are three possible approaches to invisibility. The first is perfect transparency, which sadly we cannot achieve. The second is camouflage, when the light rays emanating from the object correspond to the rays that we would expect to see in the absence of the object. This is exactly what my machine does. And the third and last approach is when an object is swathed in a metamaterial, something like an invisible hat, 
that transforms the path of light rays so that they seem unchanged. Now, we'll try it on a pizza. If everything works out, it will be a pizza that you won't have to share with your friends. Okay, I'm throwing the first switch. Did you know that the first three-dimensional invisibility was achieved by a group from the University of California, Berkeley in 2008? They created a mesh of silver microfibers that doesn't reflect or absorb light rays. As a result, the I sees light only from the objects behind the camouflaged entity. Now the second switch. Don't move, Arnold. Wait, what are you? Oh, you are such an imbecile. I'd smack you upside your head, but damn it, I don't know where you are. Put this hat on so I can see you. Okay, you have 24 hours. What are you going to do? Who'd have any doubt that's where you'd go first? If my machine worked according to the principle of invisibility, you'd become blind because the invisible body's refractive index becomes equal to that of air, and the lenses in your eyes would lose the ability to reflect light rays and focus them on the retina. The retina itself also wouldn't be able to absorb visible light with its rods and cones due to its invisibility. But as I can see, your eyesight seems to be okay, you slobbering ignoramus. Okay, now that the gym is closing, can we do something else? You have 18 hours left. I meant something a little more significant, you block-headed jerk monkey. After all, you could reveal terrible uh. secrets and perform incredible feats. You could even make your way into Area 51. Oh, right, it's in a different state. Do you have any ideas? Are you thinking about stealing it? That's a terrible idea. In any case, you need a plan. Of course, thanks to invisibility, you'll be able to stay long after closing. But then you'll need to bypass the guards. And there are also lasers all around the diamond. Can you really do a triple somersault, steal the diamond, and leave the museum in the car that will bring new antiquities for the exposition exactly at 2 a.m.? Even so, this is a really bad idea. The museum closes in an hour. Go hide in the corner and wait. And take off your hat, you mutton-headed twit. Get ready, Arnold. The main thing, obviously, is not to get caught. Arnold, it's go time! Aw, oh, nuts! All you had to do was a triple somersault, and you screwed it up again. <sighs> well, now, now you have to run for your life, Arnold! The exit is just around the corner. Come on, Arnold, you can do it! Damn, looks like you stole a glass copy of the diamond. Well, I gotta say this is an unfortunate turn of events. Although, to be honest, it's pretty logical that the original would be kept in a safe. Now you'll never have the love of the beautiful tug eye. Unfortunately, you're gonna become visible in just about an hour or so. So, good luck escaping. Arnold, I have bad news. All governments all around the world have been overthrown, and they're now each ruled by dictators. Yes, on the one hand, it's good. No one will leave their countries anymore, and everyone will work for their country's well-being and standing in the world. But on the other hand, under such regimes, most people won't live in houses or residential complexes, but in prisons, because the laws of the countries will be very strict and sometimes even really strange. You can forget about the benefits of civilization. After all, foreign economic relations aren't needed anymore, and each country will now work just for itself. But what that means is if before there wasn't any heavy industry in your country, like, for example, making vehicles, now you won't be able to get a new car, and all you can ever hope for is some crappy bicycle at best. And I'm not saying that all social media has disappeared, but now you can only have private conversations with your friends friends somewhere deep in the woods, and with the radio turned up really loud. And now, even if you want a haircut, your hairstyle will need to get an approval from the local administration. And there are just a limited number of government-approved hairdos.
But what's most frightening is that all countries now suspect each other of being a potential threat. So, almost all resources of every country are invested in military buildups. And alas, one of these days, somebody's gonna break down and hit that big red button. Arnold, you saved the world! Who would have thought your colorblindness would save the planet? What you reading? Hmm. One, he might have a scary mask on his face. Uh, Arnie, are you sure you really want to be reading this in a secluded park? The second sign of a maniac is a knife or other weapon in their hands. Are you sure you really want to know the third sign? The maniac has huge silicone… Wait, that's not it. He always attacks without warning! Fight for your life, Arnold! Try somehow to divert the maniac's attention and slip away. Never mind. You should run to a public place and get people's attention. Why is no one responding? Psychologists advise shouting fire instead of help. This way, people will notice you faster. Sure, calling the police is a great idea. Now, 48 hours after your death, they'll really definitely start looking for you. Just kidding. Wait until they arrive. Also, gym time is over. Looks like you were able to get away. But don't rush to rejoice just yet. Some maniacs hunt their victims for months and can predict exactly where they'll go next. By the way, dark alleys are a bad place to try and hide. It looks like nothing is gonna help you. Except, well, maybe that. Ingratiate yourself with the maniac. Motives of maniacs can be different. Some want power, others suffer from delusions, and some consider themselves purifiers of society. But absolutely all of them are lonely and deeply hurt people. If you treat the maniac well, then there's a chance you might survive. Yes, you'll have to put up with a few really scary things and listen to his crazy ideas. But someday it will end. The main thing is, never show your true emotions. Remember, salvation will come. Then it remains only to be explained to the police why the maniac considers you his best friend. Why is everyone so gloomy? What? The boss says you beat up Chris yesterday, dumped trash on Jamie's desk, and did something disgusting with Miss Wallace. Of course, you don't remember any of that. But your colleagues don't care. Run, Arnie! This is the end, buddy. Farewell to your one true love. And here he is, our hero of the day. A strong blow to the head has woken up Jacob again, Arnie's other personality. Or in scientific terms, his alter ego. It's called Dissociative Identity Disorder. With this disease, power over the body of the patient is completely captured by another personality. The cause of the disorder may be trauma during childhood. The child blocks off memories of bad events and starts to consider himself someone else. Jacob, unlike Tim and Arnold, doesn't suffer from multiple complexes. He's fearless and sexy, and he'll stop at nothing. Even somebody as petulant as Tagai is intrigued. But there is one thing. Jacob can only speak Dumi, which is a language common to only Eastern Nepal. The alter ego often differs from one's main personality in the language of communication, gender, age, nationality, and even IQ. And in especially exotic cases, the alter ego can be an animal or even a religious figure. The maximum number of alter egos in one person was identified in an American criminal named Billy Milligan, who had 24 different full-fledged personalities. Billy was acquitted in court as crimes he'd committed were actually committed by one of his alter egos, unbeknownst to Billy himself. Arnold, just look at what you've done. It seems now you think you're a psycho and you need to be treated. But split personality is not schizophrenia, and there's simply no cure.
What's that? An SMS from Tagai. She wants you to come to her now. Inside Arnold, there can be only one. Well, finally, it looks like it's all over. We're holding an Among Us style party. It's a popular game with over 500 million players and more than any other game in history. With 97% of players playing the free version on mobile devices, but most of the revenue is generated from the paid PC version. Of course, we're playing the free version. If it's free, I'll play as well. And I chose Brown for a reason, because he's kicked out less than 65% of the time. In more than 90% of votes, people choose to kick out black, and it's the exact color you have, Arnold. Let the games begin. The most important thing is to act quickly, because you can be killed at any time. And here's the first murder. Don't worry, we have a lot of detectives here. They'll immediately figure out that you're not the imposter. Oops. I'm pretty sure you were thrown under the bus here, Arnold. It's time to get the hell out of here before you're chucked out into space. You need to complete tasks in the game to make it clear to the rest of the players that you're not the imposter. Whoops. This room is already occupied. Let's not disturb this couple. There's a new task. You need to extinguish the fire in the electrical room. Looks like it worked. They believe you. Come on, help out this player. I think I saw a fire extinguisher. Arnold, someone is seriously trying to frame you. Moreover, according to statistics, the electrical and admin rooms are the most dangerous places. If you're actually an imposter, you need to blow up the engine and win the game. It's not working. That's cool, Arnold. So you aren't an imposter. Congratulations. Careful. So you decided to do a good deed. All of this just for the donuts. Oh, you bastard. Well, no worries. Today, you'll have a chance to do a really good deed. The whole planet is infected with diarrhea virus from China. But I made your blood the only existing vaccine. There are 7 billion people in the world, and everyone is hunting for you. 195 countries have posted your photo on all possible media. You're in all of the police databases, and not only the world's police, but all the best special forces in the world are after you. MI6, British Intelligence, which has been working around the clock for 100 years straight. ISI, Pakistan's Interdepartmental Intelligence Agency, with the largest residency in the world, 10,000 agents. The CIA, watch out Arnie, they torture people. The Canadian Intelligence Service, with a search budget of over $507 million. Do you really think you can hide from all of them? You're on every single smartphone in social media. You become more popular than Greta Thunberg. I'm sure she envies you now. After all, you can actually help save humanity. Just give them your blood, all the way down to the last drop. Elite special forces from all countries are already coming for you. U.S. Navy SEALs, the French National Gendarmerie, Chinese Snow Leopards. But of course, even a random student could catch you. Big Brother is watching you. In New York City alone, there are about 20,000 surveillance cameras. They take photos, compare the distance between the main features on your face, nose, eyes, mouth. Data is converted into a person's numeric code, a face print, and verified with the database. In addition, on the darknet, anyone can buy image databases from video cameras of cafes, hospitals, shopping centers, even near the main FBI headquarters. Meaning they can find out where you were just five minutes ago. Catch this, these glasses with built-in infrared LEDs will help you to hide your face from the cameras. For them, your face will look like a glowing blind spot. Wait a bit, you forgot the battery. This isn't enough. You need a disguise. It was a bad idea to eat this many donuts. They provoked an excessive accumulation of gases. Unleash the winds!
you look good. But search dogs will find you by the smell of butyric acid, the odorous component of your sweat. It won't help that just one gram of sweat is enough for the dog to smell you on the roof of that 10-story building or at a depth of 15 feet under concrete. In the United States alone, there are nearly 7 million drones. Stop waving and take this special weapon against drones. This gun fires a wide stream of electromagnetic emissions so you don't have to aim. It's enough for the interference stream to cover the drone and then it'll lose contact with its base and lose control. What have you done? Get lost in the crowd, bone brain! Well, you have to kiss. So, Arnie, any last wishes? <laughs>